On today's episode, we're going to talk about the tips and tricks when installing Marvin Integrity windows with our Zip R sheathing. We're also going to talk about an air sailing detail that we learned from other builders and architects at our foundation wall. We're going to walk you through the steps that we're going to take to install these integrity windows. We're dealing with a couple of different scenarios with our zip R sheathing that we want to walk you through. So step one is super important here is that because we're doing that uh, zip R, we actually have a half inch of sheathing and then an inch and a half of foam. And should water ever make its way beyond this sheathing, we're going to want to protect that. So we're using our zip tape and we're covering the entire piece of foam all the way around that window opening. From there, we're actually using a piece of clapboard. Uh, when installing it in reverse. And what I mean by that is we're putting the fat side on the inside. What that does is if water does decide to infiltrate where that window is, the water is going to have positive drainage out. And then from there, we're taking a piece of stretch tape. And that piece of stretch tape will actually sit halfway on that clapboard and we'll stretch that down around the corners, getting that nice tight seal on that bottom sill. From there, we'll take a piece of traditional zip tape tape from the back side of the stretch back to our window buck. At this point, we're ready for liquid flash. We're gonna run a bead of liquid flash around the sheathing, up the two sides and on the top. We don't do the bottom that way. If water does make its way into our, our, our sill pan detail, it will have the ability to roll out underneath the, the window flange. That window is ready to be installed, so we'll lift that up. Chris is leveling and checking the trueness of this window. Chris, walk me through what you, you're doing to make sure that this is gonna operate. Basically, we put the unit in the opening, I center it in the opening, and then I check the bottom for level first. So if it requires any shimming, I can do that, and then have the guy on the outside nail it, which I've already done. So now I'm gonna plumb the window. I check it on both sides. That side looks good. That side. That side looks good. And then I also check the window for square. Now, you, you've already checked it for horizontal level and then vertical plumb, but you're still checking it for square. Yeah, just because if the window's made right, if it's plumb and level, it should be square too. And if it's not, this is the time where we can it's correct not, it. If not, then you know, there's probably a manufacturing problem. Before he nails the sides, I want to make sure this thing operates correctly. Right? So, Everything seems to move properly, everything feels right. So I know it operates good. Then I go outside and I make sure the sides are straight before I nail it. Make sure we fill every nail hole with a nail all the way around including the bottom now all the nails are installed from there we'll actually run our zip tape which is approved by marvin to use as a flashing tape on the window that's something important to note anytime you're installing windows you want to make sure you check with the manufacturer about which tapes are compatible with your nailing flange we run our tape up the left and right and then across the top again it's important to note that we're not taping our bottom flange for drainage reasons so the windows are installed and we're basically gonna leave it as is until we're getting, we get through our insulation. Now a lot of times we're using a, uh, an expandable fit spray foam to fill this void. Um, in this case, we're actually gonna back dam it with um, a liquid flash. So we'll take a backer rod and fill this gap and then apply a liquid, basically a, a, a caulking um, to span between the framing as well as the window jam, uh, creating a continuous water barrier all the way around the window. Um, we do have our positive drainage, but this is kind of belt and suspenders. You know, worst case scenario, you get a driving rain and moisture wants to come up. That's our last line of defense. We will see this window on finish. Another detail we want to make sure that we kind of walk you through is how we're terminating this sheathing with that foam backing to our foundation wall. So right now, if we were to run this sheathing and stop, you'd have actually open foam on the very bottom of that sheathing, which could, you know, in turn, insects and things of that nature could crawl up and over the time deteriorate that foam. So we wanted to make sure we were protecting it. 
So this right here is a, a PT two by two that is adhered to our wood sill um, at the top of our foundation wall. Now, you know, we have this area that moisture as well as air could you know, make its way into the top of that foundation wall, even though we do have a sill seal. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps that we're gonna take to make sure that we get a nice tight seal from our sheathing to our foundation wall. We're gonna be using the zip sheathing tape. We're gonna run that tape onto our, our zip sheathing and then onto the two by two. We want, we're gonna wanna start back at our foundation wall to seal that bottom of, the, of this wood and then wrap it up and then make sure that we get ample coverage over onto our sheathing. Then we're gonna take our liquid flash and we're gonna install liquid flash in the corner of where this tape terminates and our foundation wall. We wanna make sure we take our time and do a nice neat job because there are opportunities where you're gonna be able to see that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of tape, adhere it to the foundation wall, tool that liquid flash onto the foundation and then peel that tape back so it's a nice neat job. Usually I'd use a piece of blue tape or something cheap. I don't have any on site so I'm just gonna use a piece of zip tape but you'll get the idea. You guys saw how we treated the edge of the exposed foam when we did our window install. But we changed it up on our door install because these are really large doors. We wanna make sure that we have as much nailing as possible. So what we're looking at here is our big slider that looks over the lake. And instead of that exposed foam, what you're actually looking at is additional framing. What we did is we took our skill saw and we ran inch and a half back from the plywood, cut the foam, not careful not to go all the way through our sheathing, and ripped that foam out and replaced it with a two by two, very similar to our sill detail, but with regular um, spruce pine fir framing. This adds another inch and a half of framing, so when we go to install this door, we're gonna have solid nailing all the way through, and that's super important because this, this door here is actually over eight foot by eight foot. Now, we are still gonna treat this detail the same. We don't necessarily have to wrap this with tape, but we're gonna stay consistent with it. We are gonna wrap that tape across this seam and back out onto our taped edge on the exterior prior to installing our door and taking all the necessary steps to make sure that we adhere to the same standards the windows are being installed at. So this is our first time using that zip bar sheathing and I think it's really important to note that all of these tips and tricks that we've learned and we're implementing and we're sharing are stuff that we learn with other architects, um, other builders, as well as the team over at Huber. So those are a couple of the tricks I wanted to make sure that we shared during this window and door install, but also talk about that airtight seal down at our foundation. Stay tuned for the next episode of Design, Build, Repeat. Doug, is the camera on? Are you still rolling? I got a question for you guys. So this was always on our drawing. It's a 45, kind of makes for that um, requirement or the, the width requirement up on our second level. That screams 1997 to me. So I want to change that. I want to bring that curve all the way across. I want to know what you guys think. If that's a good idea, you think it will look cool? Interesting enough. All right, wrap that up. <laughs>